Let me welcome Dean Lewis to Noise11.com with a special announcement, Dean. Yeah, mate, well, I'm coming back and doing my first Australian tour in like two and a half years. In uh, I'm playing in November um, in New Zealand and all across Australia and a bunch of regional place, uh, shows as well. So I'm really excited about that. Yeah, two and a half years. This is called the Sad Boy Winter Summer Tour. <laughs> Explain the title. I just thought it was funny. And my record label was like that. You can't call it that. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to call it that. <laughs> and, um, well, you know, yeah. So I just, yeah, it's just kind of a dumb name, but, um, yeah, we just kind of, I'm doing it. In, I was doing it in uh, America because it was, it was a flip on the seasons and we just thought it was a fun name to be honest. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, you have already performed a few shows in America and uh, the Americans are pretty lucky, aren't they? Because they're getting a sneak preview of some of the songs that will be coming up on the uh, on the album. The unreleased songs, uh, How Do I Say Goodbye and Scares Me, have been performed live so far. So tell me about those two songs. Are they for the second album? Yeah, they're for the second album. Um, How Do I Say Goodbye is a song about my dad and it's the next song that I'm releasing. And, um, and Scares Me is a song that's just going to be on the album. Um, it's been great playing these shows, man. Like, cause you know, with COVID, I didn't know if we were going to have an opportunity to play again ever. Like I honestly was like, Oh, was, is it all over? And I've just done like five shows back to back. As you can tell, my voice is, is really sore. And the shows have been amazing in America. Like the thing is, you know, obviously I haven't released my second album by the time I do the Australian tour, my album's going to be out. So, you know, we've had to play a lot of the old, my first album and not only my, maybe like three or four or five new songs. So I can't wait to play a full album's worth of new songs um, in Australia, which I'm really excited about. So it's going to be great. What is the title of album two? Um, we're not allowed to say that yet. I, we haven't announced it all yet, but um, it's an album. It's a song from the album, but um, I'm not sure when we're posting that. Probably relatively soon, though. Yeah. <laughs> all right. To be continued. Uh, one of the songs you have been playing uh, is the Amy Shark song, Adore. Do the Americans know that song? Yeah, I think I think that song did okay for her in America. I'm not sure how um, – yeah, yeah, I love playing the song. My fans, oh, they love it. And so it's super fun playing that cover of her song. I think it's – I mean, some of the lyrics she uses, it's just, it's just one, of the, it's one of the great Australian songs, I'd say. So it's a pleasure covering that and playing it overseas. It's been really fun to play, actually. Did you have a long list of songs that you were going to cover and you chopped it back to that song? I do a cover every every um, tour that I do. I mean, it was Dancing in the Dark was one, then it was um, Mr. Brightside by the... Oh, no, When, when We Were Young by The Killers. Um, and then we just thought, well, this is a perfect one because I covered a door on my EP, so why don't we just start playing this live? And, and the fans are loving it, so... Uh, Dancing in the Dark would have been a, a, a nice placement. Did that come anywhere in the set near uh, Used to Love? Um, no, that was, we played Dancing in the Dark, I think, I think on the last tour we played that. So, you know, who knows, you know, for the Australian one, we'll choose a new cover and we'll come back with something amazing. Maybe we'll be Dancing in the Dark again, but it's always nice playing a new one. I'd love to play Goo Goo Dolls, um, song Iris. I love that song. Maybe that would be a fun one to cover. Oh, fantastic song. Yeah. Yeah. That song, uh, used to love, uh, where you, uh, name check Bruce Springsteen in there. Uh, have you had any feedback from Springsteen? Do you know if he's heard the song? Has he commented? No, no, I never heard anything back. But that Springsteen line, I was trying to put that in so many songs. Like I had three songs that I'd written that I'd had that are unreleased that I'd put that line in. And when Martin Garrix called me to do the song, when we were writing it, I thought, oh, this is the perfect place to put that in. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm love. I look, I'm such a Springsteen fan. I mean, uh, from his more fan of his writing style, I learn a lot from his writing style. But um, yeah, yeah, never heard anything back from him though. <laughs> and what a coincidence that uh, I'm talking to you. You're in Nebraska, and Nebraska was one of his solo album titles. Do you get a sense of what he was singing about on that album by being in that state at the moment? A, a little bit. It's a very um, – and in, well, I mean, look, we're only here for like – I think we, we got in this morning and then we leave tonight. So I've, the, all I've seen in Nebraska is like a coffee shop and then uh, this. So it's one of those things we never get to see anything, man. It kind of sucks, you know, but um, – yeah, I always say on the next tour, hopefully we can see more of the place we never do, so unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. Tell me about uh, as uh, Be All Right started to sort of make its way around the world, you know, a massive hit in Australia, in the US, in the UK, right across Europe. Has that started to sort of wave out 
Uh, what reaction did it have on you? Were you sort of looking at the charts on a day-by-day basis and monitoring as it got bigger? I was. I My dad used to update me. I mean, I didn't really realise how big that song was. Like, it's a, like, it still streams 4 million a week on Spotify every single week, two and a half years later, and probably 3 million, 2 million on Apple Music. Like, it's crazy. Like, you know, I guess it was a wild thing. I thought that every song after that, I thought every song just blows up because every song I put out was just huge. Like Waves was huge. Then Be Alright was huge. Seven Minutes did really well. Um, yeah, I just, it was just what an experience, man. Like having one of those is just the coolest thing ever. Like, um, it's just a, and I listen back now and I, I can hear it. It's like, it's, to, it's just a really good song. I think at the time I, I didn't realize how good it was. Um, but it's just, it's permeated. I, I played a show in Minneapolis last night and there's, I got a thousand people in the room from Minneapolis singing that song back to me as loud as anything. It's crazy. The uh, the new album uh, that is coming up that you've uh, you've talked about, this will be the second album, A Place We Knew was the first album. And we go back to uh, 2016 for the first single, Waves. Do you realise that since the release of Waves to now is exactly the same period from the start of the Beatles to the end of the Beatles? That's crazy. You know, I've put out one album. I think, you know, if, if it wasn't for COVID, I would have put out, I reckon I'd be my third album would be coming out soon. It just delayed things by about two years. Um, well, the good news is this, is that I used this time to write this album and then I've got the next one. For, I've got like seven or eight songs already. You know what I mean? So I use this time and now I'm not stopping. I'll put the second album out. Then there's going to be music. It's not, it's going to be like crazy. It's going to be so much music coming out soon. So that's crazy. So could there be a 2022 album and a 2023 album? Yeah, for sure. I think so. There'll be one in 2022, and then the next one will be 2023, 100%, without a doubt. Hmm. Maybe even in the first six months of 2023. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, we've got uh, the tour coming up, uh, which we talked about at the beginning of the interview, uh, starting off uh, 8th of November in Brisbane. So I, I take it we will have album number two in the title from our oh, album so number two by then. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, the album, the album will be out before the, the tour, which I'm really excited about. It's going to be so cool to play new songs, man. It's like, it's, I'm so excited. And it gives you the chance to perform songs that you've never had the chance to play in Australia as well. Exactly. No, it's been so long. It's been two and a half, two and a half three years. So I can't wait to come back. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be amazing. Yes, I think the last time I saw you perform live would have been at the APRA Awards. Uh, when was that, three years ago? Yeah, two and a half years ago. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, the April Awards. That's right. That was great. You went home with a few awards that night. Yeah, that's, that was a good good award show, that one. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, Dean Lewis, thank you for joining us at Noise 11. Thanks, Paul. Appreciate it, man.